quick question. If you folks want to put something into chat just to get us uh, going here on artificial intelligence, um, which one of these are real and which are AI generated? Put your uh, answers in the chat. All oh, lots of different answers. Well, guess what? They're all AI generated. <laughs> I tricked you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah. So that's, it's amazing how um, much better. When I used to do something like this um, with my kids last school year, 18 months ago, you could much easier to see the difference between a real photograph and the AI one, because the AI one always had something a little funky going on um, that you could tell, but it's getting much better. Every time I look, they get better. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, I'm a computer science teacher, but um, within the last two years, I've kind of gotten immersed in teaching artificial intelligence because I had the opportunity to teach an AI for all summer camp up at the college, up at College Park. And this is a high school level camp where the kids actually are immersed very deeply into artificial intelligence and end up working on projects with graduate students up there. So at first I was very intimidated and because I, my concept of teaching artificial intelligence was, gosh, that's only something that you would teach to graduate students. You know, you don't, can't, and, but okay. so totally reworked my whole idea about artificial intelligence and teaching it. Yes, you can teach it to kids. As a matter of fact, right now, um, um, facilitating a teacher professional development that's available for kindergarten through 12th grade teachers about how you also could teach artificial intelligence to your kids and why it's important to do that. So um, in, in regards to AI for K-12, there is an organization, a consortium of people that are working together to come up with a framework as to how should we teach this to kids. And, and I like it, the fact that um, Jan brought this up in her, um, her beginning talk about how important it was to teach computer science to all kids, you know, K through five. And going hand in hand with that is also the, the concepts of artificial intelligence. And um, so the kids are aware this is something that's around you and it's impacting you, uh, making decisions for you. Um, so understanding how it works is really, really important. So um, even though I teach high school, I, um, what I ended up developing is, is something that you could also use in the middle school level. So what I did last school year, the beginning of last school year, I came back, I was all excited. I wanted to teach artificial intelligence to my students. And I have a, a foundations of computer science or exploring computer science, a couple of sections of kids. And um, and I noticed that they had come out with an alternate unit. So to replace the robotics unit or to add after the robotics unit, they have an alternate artificial intelligence unit. So I took a look at it and what you're seeing right here on the slides is how they broke it down into the different parts. Um, and I decided that I was gonna take, you know, bits and pieces of this and include into it some of the things that I've discovered on my own and some of the things even that I used with the high school kids. Um, to um, come up with another unit. And that's what I've put together. And um, I've shared it a lot. And then when we went to all virtual in the spring, I tried to add to it and modify it as well so that it could be done virtually. So there is a bit.ly that you can see right there. So you can go in and you can access the materials that I put together. It's um, Google Docs and Google Slides. Um, that And what it covers is four major concepts uh, within artificial intelligence. Uh, what is AI? Um, this sub-concept of machine learning, because it's actually really fun. Uh, this really important concept of image recognition. And then finally, I love the bookends to our lightning talks. We're going to talk about, um, okay, I'm going to get the word wrong, you know, technical and ethics. Um, but what she was showing you and what I'm gonna show you, guess what? It's, it's all the same thing. So um, yeah, incorporating the whole um, concept of ethics and the impact of artificial intelligence is crucial to our kids. So it's, yay. So I even have videos of Joy in here as well. <laughs> and I was glad to see that she had another one. So what I'd like to do is just to give you a little glimpse of what is in the unit. So the purpose of what is AI is to capture the student's attention and to make them realize um, how much it is in the world around them and what they, what they, um, where, where they see, where they use it. And also to think maybe even outside of their own world, um, think about their parents' world or um, the work world or the future and things like that. 
So when you look at the slides, anything that's underlined is an active link to the, some of the resources that I use in the lesson. And oh, by the way, even though there's only four topics, all of these topics are multiple day lessons. So this unit in its entirety would take at least two weeks, probably more in your classroom. I call it, and that's why I call it a mini unit because it's, it's not gonna take up a whole quarter or anything like that. Um, but ML in the world around you, um, by the way, they, they updated their website when I first uh, put the link in for that. It was, you would go to these different virtual places and the kids could go you know, into the library or into the police station and just see where machine learning is used. And they've since um, streamlined the site, but it's still pretty good. It still has a lot of information in it. And in this lesson, I also have my students um, investigate smart cities and start to think about um, the things that make, what, what are important to AI. And one of the really important things to AI is sensing and to have sensors and data you know, reading in all that data. So there's a couple of videos where they watch, you know, about smart cities and sensing. And then it's always fun. There's always something fun to do. And that's um, the Google experiments. If you haven't ever tried them with your students, um, I just, I usually we give the kids a couple to pick from, but generally they go out and they try all of them and play around with them. Again, just to get that feel for what, you know, how is AI, what's it doing, what's it predicting, what's it look like kind of thing. And then from there, um, since it, you know, was high school kids, and I think even at middle school, it, it doesn't hurt to, you know, go delve into the concept of machine learning because the majority of artificial intelligence, not all of it, but a lot of artificial intelligence is about machine learning. Um, so what is it, what is some of the terminology about, about it? But along the way, using some um, tools that you've seen already uh, to also have the kids working in machine learning as well. So I use two different tools. Uh, the first one is, um, okay, it wasn't this slide, but that's okay. Oh yeah, there's some videos also. There's so many good videos out there um, that demonstrate you know, artificial intelligence and its use in the real world. Like for example, this is a strange title, Solving Problems Big, Small and Prickly. <laughs> it sounds funny, but in there, there's a little story about a cucumber farm and how it was a, like two older parents that ran this cucumber farm and their son. And the mom spent a majority of her time, she had to categorize the cucumbers because they had to be sorted by size and shape and prickliness and things like that. And it took a lot of time. So the son, I guess, was taking a couple of classes and got a camera and ran some things and took pictures, collected a lot of data, categorized all the um, different cucumber shapes and sizes, and then built a little machine that would sort them. So it was just one application of machine learning. And it's a nice example for the kids to show that they could even do something like this if they wanted to. So then I start to introduce the, you know, the concept of the data and how machine learning works. And, and I'm a formal math teacher, so always comes around to the fact that when you're building a machine learning model, well, all you're doing is making an equation. It's really all you're doing. And then how are you training it? You're changing the numbers in the equation. So there's a lot of ways you can relate it to whatever content you might actually be teaching if it's not computer science. So um, one of the first tools uh, that we use is machine learning for kids. And I go in here on purpose, uh, because I want to have a conversation about the concept of sentiment analysis. So we're used to talking about image recognition because it's cool and things like that. But I think a lot more of the machine learning that goes on has to do with the words that we're using. And that's where sentiment analysis comes into play. That's where um, it takes text and the combination of words that you're using and it labels it in some way. And the easiest way to do that with kids is to say, well, let's do a, a machine model where it's gonna recognize my text as either being happy or sad. So you train it, um, you go and you put in all kinds of words into different buckets that are labeled happy or sad. And then um, you run the AI that creates the model and then you test your model. But the cool thing about ML, ML for kids is they have, um, it's attached to Scratch. So once you build that model, you go and you click on a button and it actually provides you, if you go in and you create a teacher account, you can download a PDF that's a step-by-step -step guide where they can now take these new blocks that they've generated and put them into a Scratch program 
to make a little smiley face or a little face that's going to ask you a question, how are you feeling? You type it in and then it reacts to it. So there's so many cool projects that can come out of that. And then of course, after that, you've got to do image recognition. You've got to do um, Google's um, teachable machine, which we already saw a demo of, which was really awesome. Um, and But before I do that, I do take some time. I talk to the kids about how there's even subsets of machine learning. Artificial intelligence, the machine learning is a subset of that. And a subset of machine learning is these thing called uh, neural networks. Um, and that's what image recognition uses. And I don't get really technical with it, but it gives the kids a couple of fancy words to toss around. Hey, we used a neural network. Um, and the fact that in the one video that I have a link to here that kind of shows you what the neural network is seeing and it's not what people see, okay? I have some activities that the kids do that where they're thinking like a human, but when we re really look at what the computer sees and how it breaks it down and filters it and looks at edges and colors and all kinds of things like that, that they see that the computers, aren't they really thinking? Are they really just bringing it down to a bunch of numbers kind of thing? Really not the same way people think, but even though it's, it's built, neural networks are, the concept comes from the way human brains work. So Google's teachable machine is um, a, a must do if you're gonna teach artificial intelligence to your kids because it's so easy to use. Um, so I have a little demo right there where I took, I had my rubber duckies, my programming rubber duckies and trained it um, to test what, what color it was and things like that. And the best part of this, what I like to do is I want the kids to, to see how artificial intelligence can be used to solve a problem. So it ends with a project. This particular section ends with a project where I give them a couple of ideas, like you know, being in Maryland and Maryland has two kinds of poisonous snakes. Can I train an image recognition model where if I fed it, took a picture, went outside and took a picture, is this snake poisonous? It could recognize it and tell it to me. So the kids actually do this. So in Google's teachable machine, you don't have to use the webcam because I couldn't at school anyway. The kids had to upload pictures and you can do that. So they would upload a whole bunch of this kind of snake and that kind of snake and then non-poisonous snakes. And then you upload a separate picture to test it later and it would identify it. And you know, things like, I, I don't recognize what poison ivy looks like. It would be really nice if I could point my camera at it. And then, you know, something to solve a problem like with sign language. And because if you could use the webcam, wouldn't it be really cool if, you know, I use my hands a lot, <laughs> if it could be, you know, interpreting for me um, what's going on. And I give them a choice. They could either use one of my ideas or come up with their own, which is what I would prefer. You know, what do you see as being a problem that you think you could use image recognition to solve? And then finally, that all important impact and ethics of AI. And there's Joy with her mask on. So I definitely show the coded gaze um, so the kids can see that. And, um, and not just about ethics either, also about the impact. And the lesson that comes out of this is the kids get to do some research about the impact of artificial intelligence on careers and about industries um, and baseball. You know, now we're using AI in baseball. And I asked the kids that did the project on that, what well, do you think that changed the effect? Was that impact in the outcomes of the World Series last year, the year before, or whatever it was? And it really gets the kids excited um, when they can pick something like that. I had a student that picked the impact of AI on cooking, which I didn't know it did <laughs> until he picked that. So, um, so, and I know we're not necessarily in person to be able to do group projects, but, if you do you know, shared Google Slides and things like that and the kids can contribute and they can um, you know, to the same slides and, and converse in there, hopefully they can be able to do some kind of group project. So it looks like we are running out of time, which is perfect because that was on my last slide. So uh, opportunity for you. If you think this is interesting to you and you want to delve in further, further and get a CPD credit, as I mentioned, uh, facilitating, um, it's integrating AI for all grade levels and subject areas. It's a 15 hour course. Oh, um, nine hours are asynchronous because IBM has um, paid for putting together um, these lessons for teachers to teach AI K through 12. So you do those on your own time. And then we get back together two days a week for just an hour. 
where we um, look at actually try some of the resources together. And um, what you'll work on over the course of three weeks is coming up with a lesson plan for how would you use what you've learned into your own classroom. And it's been really exciting because I've, we've had everything from kindergarten up through advanced, you know, kids at past AP in high school, and they all learned something from taking this course. So it was great.